Hello, this is part two in a little series I'm calling Distribution of Quadratic Forms. I probably should say with normal variants, you know, where X is normally distributed. Um, I wanted to quickly remind you that part one, we, we looked at this random variable when X was normal zero I, and then theorem two, we looked at it when x was uh, normal zero sigma, where sigma was positive definite. And then sigma and a had to meet a couple requirements before it was considered uh, a chi-squared with r degrees of freedom. In this video, we are going to, and let me flash it first, we're going to look at it where it's a normal zero sigma random variable but sigma is positive sigma definite. And then it, of course, has to meet some requirements. But before we get there, I, I need we need a theorem that we're going to use. And so for this video, there, I'm suggesting three background videos, item potent matrices, the spectral decomposition, and of course, part one of this series, distribution of quadratic forms. So theorem three is let A be an n by n matrix, and if A raised to the i is equal A raised to the i plus 1 for some positive i, then A is idempotent. Okay, and here's a quick little proof of that. Let's let lambda k be an eigenvalue of A. Now there's going to be n of them. Um, then uh, lambda k to the i, so the, the eigenvalue raised to the ith power are the eigenvalues of a to the i. And now that's one of those background things. I'm assuming you know that and not prove it. Um, similarly, lambda to the i plus 1 is the eigenvalue for a to the i plus 1. So then note that lambda to the i v is equal to a to the i v, right? So this is, that's the definition of an eigenvalue. But because of our assumption, this is true, right? We can put in i plus 1 here. But then that says that that eigenvalue for a to the i is the same eigenvalues for um, a to the i plus 1. So that implies that these are equal. Now, eigenvalues can, you know, take on certain values. But how can, the, you know, how can it be a value when it's raised to power and then raised to the power plus, you know, that power plus one, how can they be equal? This for all K. Well, the only way is that the eigenvalues be zero or one. Otherwise, this can never hold. But since all the eigenvalues are zero or one, that implies that A is idempotent. And that's by BV1. Now let's jump into theorem four. We're going to let X be multivariate normal, zero vector, um, sigma, where sigma is a positive def semi-definite matrix. So let's let A be a K by K symmetric matrix. And then if this relationship holds and the trace of A sigma is R, then this quadratic form is uh, central chi-squared with R degrees of freedom. Now, one of the goals is we're going to use theorem 2 in BV3 to prove this. And we're going to do it in a, in a very unique way. So the goal is to use BV3 theorem 2. Okay. Now, by BV2, the spectral decomposition, we can write sigma as uh, P lambda P prime, where P is an orthogonal matrix and lambda is a diagonal matrix with D and 0. And D is a diagonal matrix with the positive eigenvalues down it. Since uh, sigma is positive semi-definite, it says all the eigenvalues are, are zero or positive. And so whatever its rank, that's how many positive eigenvalues there are. And here, let's just, let's just assume it has a rank of L. So where L is the rank of A. Um, so note that A, P, and Lambda are all K by K. D is an L by L matrix, and L strictly less than K. 
If L equals K, then it says sigma is a positive definite matrix. And then we're back in the theorem 2 setting. So it has to be strictly less than. But note that D is non-singular. So all these are positive and it's a diagonal matrix. And so it's non-singular. So let's write what we know so far. So by the spectral decomposition, sigma can be written as P lambda P prime. So if we break up P into, you know, we partition it into P1 and P2, where this is a K by L matrix, and then uh, lambda we said was this, it's a diagonal matrix. So D is also diagonal with the positive eigenvalues. This is P prime. But when you do this matrix multiplication, you get P1, D, P1 prime. Of course, P is a K by L matrix. So let's let Z be P prime X. Now remember, P is this whole matrix here. Okay, but sigma can be written like this. Okay, so then Z is a multivariate normal, zero uh, lambda. And this is true because X is a multivariate normal, and we're going to take a linear combination of multivariate normal random variables. So it is a multivariate normal random variable. And so the mean of Z is zero, and then the mean, the variance of Z is you, you take out the matrix in the front, and you transpose it in the back, and this was uh, sigma, so we get this. But the decomposition of the spectral decomp of sigma is this, and those are identity matrices because P is an orthogonal matrix, so we get lambda back. Um, so, so now note, uh, being even more specific of what we just said. Z is P prime X, right? But P can be partitioned like this in X, and then you just multiply that into both of those. And we're going to call this Z1 and this Z2. And we know, we just, sh we just showed that it's multivariate normal zero lambda, okay? So this is the zero vector. And lambda is this. It's, this is an L by L a diagonal matrix, positive entries, and the zero elsewhere. That's what it is. So now what do we know about Z2? Z2 has zero variance. So that says it's a constant. But if its mean is zero and it's a constant, that says Z2 has to, it's, it's a constant, has to be zero. So now if we just look at Z1, it's a multivariate normal, zero, with uh, covariance matrix D. Now, D is positive definite, and so, yeah, so, and so let's, let's keep going. So, let A star be P1 prime A P1. Now, A star is symmetric, because A is symmetric. If you, if you transpose this and distribute, you get it back. So, now the goal is to use BV3, Theorem 2 on this quadratic matrix. Okay, so what we need to do, Z1 is uh, uh, Z1 is multivariate 0, D, and D is a positive definite matrix, right? So the Z1 at least fits that definition. And now, and, but there's conditions on A star. So we need to show that A star D is idempotent and it has a rank of R. So that's the conditions of theorem two. So now let's check for that it's idempotent. So let's square it. And then that's A star D, A star D. Now here, um, so A star was this piece here, and that's D. A star was P1 prime A, P1, and this is D. And that's the identity matrix, so it doesn't change it. But we have P1, A, and then uh, P1, D, P1 prime, that was sigma, and that's A. And then P1, D, P1 prime, that was sigma. And then we have P1. Now this next step is one of the assumptions. Basically, sigma A, sigma is this, sigma. Uh, sigma A, Sigma A, Sigma. So right, so we have P1, we have A, and then the Sigma A, Sigma 
can be replaced by this one and then we have P1 on the back end. Now let's unfold it. So we have P1 prime A, we write sigma as this, and then we have A, and then we have sigma, then we have A, and then we have sigma, and then we have P1, right? So nothing, everything is checking out so far. But if we look here, um, P1 prime A, P1 was A star, and then we have D. And then we have it again. There's A star and D. And then um, A star and D. And then that's the identity matrix. So we get A star D cubed. So A star D squared is equal to A star D cubed. But by theorem three in this video, that means that A star D is idempotent. So now let's look at the rank. The rank of AD, A star D, since it's idempotent, that's the trace, and then we can put in what A star is, and then the properties of trace, we can move that to the back side here. But P1D, P1 prime was sigma, and, and one of the assumptions was that this trace is R. So that implies by sigma or theorem two that Z1 star A star, Z1 prime A star Z1 is chi-squared with R degrees of freedom by theorem two of BV3, okay? Now this doesn't prove our theorem yet, so now let's let's explore, but this, this is a fact. So this is what, somehow we wanna show that X prime AX is a chi-squared with R degrees of freedom, okay? So here, let's put in the identity matrix here and the identity matrix here, which is what this is. P P prime, P, P prime. So that's the identity. But look at the X, P, and the, and the pre prime X. That's what we call Z. So let's put Z there. Now in the next step, let's write in a little more detail what each of those are. So Z, remember it was Z1, zero, because of that was the Z2 is a constant at zero. P prime can be broken or partitioned as previously, and this is A, and then that's P, and then Z again, where the, you know, it's Z1, zero. And then when you multiply this through, you get this piece here, and then you get A, and then when you multiply this through, you get P1, Z1. But wait, P1 prime A, P1 is what we were calling A star. So we have Z1 prime A star Z1, and we just showed that that was chi squared with R degrees of freedom. So that says X prime AX is chi squared with R degrees of freedom. Well, that's all I have for today. The next video, we will start looking at where X is a multivariate normal and has a mean vector mu, and then we'll, we'll kind of build up the different covariance matrices. That's the next video. And if I do the, the fourth video, it will be when the X is a multivariate normal with some mean vector and the, var the covariance matrix will be positive semi-definite. Um, that result is not used very much. Matter of fact, I've never used it. Um, so I don't know if I'll do the fourth video, um, but I may do it anyway because it's, it's kind of a neat, fun result, but I've never used it. <laughs> anyway, if you like the vid this video, please like it and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.